Hey, what's up guys? It's Kyle Rock here. I'm a filmmaker and a surfer. The tutorial that you are about to watch is from my brand new online course. It's called the Intermediate Surfers Roadmap and it's designed to take you from intermediate level surfing all the way up to advanced. And it's a very comprehensive and powerful course that I've been working on for the past few months and it's now available at the Surfers Roadmap. Dot com. So make sure you check it out via the link in the description below. There's a ton more info and there's a lot of uh, helpful cues and techniques and tips to learn how to apply the things we're going to talk about in this video here today and to correct some common mistakes. Cheers. Oh, and uh, by the way, hit the like button, subscribe, let me know in the comments what are you working on on your surfing. Okay, roll vid. Top turns rely heavily on great bottom turn technique and then chiefly, rotation. Not just rotational intensity, but the timing and release point of the rotation. As you may have already learned from me, rotation is driven by the shoulders, but is led by the leading hand and the eyes. Let's now take a look at some top turns so that we can determine an ideal technique. Keep in mind that a top turn is akin to a cutback in most situations, so we may use the names interchangeably. We will differentiate between those top turns and a roundhouse cutback later on. This top turn here on the forehand is a pretty classic, functional and safe maneuver performed at an intermediate to advanced level. Let's analyze it closely and we'll start off from our neutral position that we've covered in the bottom turns module. As I've said before, that part is key to a successful top turn, so I can't reiterate enough, make sure you go back and understand that lecture. So here we are at the neutral position. As the surfer goes up the wave here, note where the eyes are looking, right at the section of the wave that the surfer wants to perform the maneuver on. This is really important because it helps the surfer decide when and how to perform their turn. Often at this late stage, the surfer can fully commit to the top turn or even change his approach to do more of a re-entry if the lip is steeper than he originally thought. This section though is perfect top turn material. Notice the about to break kind of look to this section here, but also note the lack of steepness or intensity in that lip, which allows for a smooth rebound as the board rolls over onto the heel side rail and performs the turn. If the lip was breaking harder, pitching away from the top further out onto the face, then the surfer would be better off performing a re-entry. But this nice coping here offers a beautiful canvas for a top turn, and so that's what the surfer does. The first movements of the top turn are, you guessed it, the eyes, head, and the shoulders. In fact, if we watch closely, they all move at the same time in this example. The eyes and head start to shift and rotate back down the wave. Simultaneously, the shoulders do the same. The shoulder movement, although kind of driven from a strength perspective by this trailing arm pushing across the body, is really led by the leading arm opening up and pulling away from the body back this way. This movement causes the lower body and then eventually the surfboard to follow. Let's analyze it even more closely. When I teach maneuvers, I like to introduce people to the concept of the dial, we've spoken about it previously, or the clock, which helps us gauge some references when it comes to rotation. When we talk about rotation during a maneuver, it must be connected and fluid. This means that a surfer can't simply rotate from 12 to six without passing through one, two, three, four, and five. Rotating too fast will result in a disconnected movement where the hips can't possibly keep up and the surfer normally ends up having to counter rotate mid maneuver to reconnect and then loses any actual kinetic expression in the turn. So those first movements of the top turn begin to move through the rotation dial while staying connected to the lower body. You will instinctively know if you're rotating too fast and too wild here because your turns won't feel nice and you'll likely fall off or just feel unbalanced when you do them. Notice how if we play this turn out again, the surfer almost makes a point of rotating the first part of the dial and then almost takes a little check-in moment to make sure the lower body is still connected before accentuating and then completing the rotation through the dial in the later part of the turn. 
At this point, due to where the surfer has rotated the shoulders, there is now a lot of momentum and kinetics moving through into this back leg here. This is the final stage of the torsion. Now this almost stomps the board into the water, which not only throws a lot of spray, but also serves as a strong rebounding force to maintain momentum and come out of the turn with maximum speed. Let's take a look at two variations of this maneuver on the forehand before taking a look at them on the backhand. The first wave we have a standard top turn where the surfer performs it with the intention of continuing down the line and doing some more maneuvers. The second wave, we have the surfer cashing in all his chips on the one top turn, or cutback, you might call it. This is because he has decided that there is really only one money section on this wave, so he's gonna throw everything at it. On this side, the surfer finishes in the rotation dial at around a two with the left leading arm, whereas over here, the surfer finishes all the way back at 12 or one. This has a dramatic difference on how much energy is transferred and torqued into the lower body and then finally into this back leg or foot here. Because there is so much torque pressure over on this side, there is now so much kinetic potential being sent through into the leg, foot and back of the board that it can't do anything but actually slow the board down, almost like a car skidding to a halt as opposed to slowing to a halt. In doing so though, the surfer throws more spray and it ends up with a more radical turn, though he has sacrificed largely the rest of the wave to do this. Over on the safer side, the surfer still finds the rebound effect and strong kinetics through the back leg, but doesn't press or rotate too hard because he believes the wave has more to offer down the line. And if his energy and momentum starts moving back towards this way, towards the white water, rather than down the face, he'll lose speed and either not make the next section or arrive there with too little speed. All these considerations are made in a micro moment on every wave and even though these will never be a very conscious thought for you, they'll be instinctive. It's important we understand how significant our rotational approach is to the overall aesthetics and function of each turn. Backhand top turns are very similar to forehand in principle, but there are some small technique differences between the two. We've already differentiated between the two, forehand and backhand, when it comes to the bottom turn in the previous module, and that leads us into the differences here in the actual top turn itself. Because there isn't really a strong jump movement in the backside bottom turn, this impacts how we arrive at the top of the wave. Namely, we need to get our leading arm up nice and high in order to create space to punch and rotate back down into. This means that in the bottom turn, we really, really need to find a rotation and a lift with the shoulders, mostly driven by the leading arm. The leading arm carries the body up to the top of the wave with it, as opposed to jumping up there with an extension. Now we have created all this negative space here with a strong, kinetically powerful body position to punch down into. Importantly, and somewhat obviously, the back arm now doesn't push rotate across the front of the body, instead it pull rotates backwards behind the body to assist with the downward motion of the leading arm. At this point, the extension finally occurs with the back leg, which similar to on our forehand, creates that rebound effect, puts an exclamation mark on our turn and throws a lot of spray. The main technical elements here to think about are the leading arm lifting and rotating during the bottom turn, attaining that neutral position with the leading arm up nice and high, the punch down and across the body to initiate the shoulder rotation, and the final extension of the back leg to complete the turn. As I mentioned previously, recompressing right after that extension of the back leg is super important to recapture speed and momentum to continue surfing down the line. Thanks so much for watching guys. My name is Kale Brock. You can join me on Instagram as well, at Kale's Broccoli. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And of course, make sure you check out the intermediatesurfersroadmap.com. There's a whole bunch more information like you've seen in the video today. 
common mistake fixes, technique cues, and a whole bunch more. It's really, really helpful. So make sure you check it out and I'll catch you guys soon. Cheers.